Hello, today we're going to be discussing particles, antiparticles and photons. Firstly, we're going to be converting between a photon's wavelength and energy. We're also going to be performing calculations to uh, explore the idea of rest mass and rest energy. And finally, we're going to be explaining the concept of antiparticles and the associated processes, peer production and annihilation. When you've previously thought about light, you probably considered it to be a wave. That's true for any electromagnetic radiation. The wavelength of light is inversely proportional to the frequency, where C is equal to the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. This is of course a constant, assuming we're moving through a vacuum. However, light can also be thought of as a particle. The energy of an electromagnetic wave is emitted in short bursts. We call these bursts photons. Photons can be considered to be particles of light. We've got a new equation as well, which describes them. E, the energy of a photon, is equal to H, Planck's constant, multiplied by the frequency f. This Planck's constant is a fundamental constant of the universe. It's especially important when we're talking about things on a very small or quantum scale. Let's do an example. Let's calculate the energy of a photon of orange light, which has a wavelength 600 nanometers. If you're confident, you can pause the video and calculate this yourself. H is equal to Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. C is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8. Putting these into the equation, we get that the energy of that photon is 3.315 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. This is, of course, an incredibly small number. So, when we are dealing with quantities on this scale, we often use a different unit, the electron volt. An electron volt is the energy needed to accelerate an electron across a potential difference of one volt. What's more important for you, however, is you know the magnitude of an electron volt. One electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So, let's convert the energy from joules into electron volts. Since one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, we need to divide our energy through by this number. If we do that, we get that the energy of a single photon is equal to 2.07 electron volts. And here's a chance for you to practice using this equation. Pause the video and use the equation to fill in the gaps in the table. It's worth noting that the wavelength is given to you in nanometers and the energy in the first column is to the power 10 to the minus 19 joules. And here are the values of the completed table. Next up, we're going to discuss a new idea, which is rest mass. Rest mass is quite simply the mass a particle has when it's at rest. Einstein told us that E is equal to mc squared. This means that energy and mass can be converted into one another. Therefore, the rest mass can be converted into energy, which is the minimum energy a particle possesses. A proton has a mass 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Putting this into the equation, we can calculate the rest energy of the proton. It's equivalent to 1.503 times 10 to the minus 10 joules. This is again, not a very convenient number. Instead, generally speaking, when we see values for the rest energy quoted, we will see them in electron volts. Converting this into electron volts, we get that the rest energy of a proton is 938 million electron volts. So the rest energy of a proton is 938 mega electron volts. Equivalently, we also state that the rest mass of a proton is 938 mega electron volts per C squared, where C squared has been taken into the unit. I'll leave this as an exercise for the viewer to work out why this is the case. And here are the values for the rest mass and the rest energy of the proton, neutron and electron. These are included in the data sheet, which you'll have for the exam. The last new idea we'll meet today is the idea of an antiparticle. 
Quite simply, all the particles that you know about have a corresponding antiparticle. Antimatter is made up of antiparticles in the same way that ordinary matter is made up of particles. An atom of antihydrogen, for example, would contain an antiproton in the centre, and this would be orbited by a positron, the name we give to the anti-electron. Every particle has the opposite charge to its antiparticle. So the electron has negative charge, while the positron has positive charge. However, the particle and antiparticle have the same mass. It's worth noting also that the neutron and the antineutron have the same charge, as their charge is both zero. When matter meets antimatter, it undergoes a process called annihilation, where the matter is completely destroyed. So if a positron meets an electron, they annihilate, and in their place come two photons. The positron and the electron have a minimum energy 0.511 mega electron volts. So when they annihilate, their total energy is equivalent to 1.022 mega electron volts. All of this energy is converted into the energy of the photons after annihilation. The opposite process of annihilation is also possible. Instead of two particles annihilating and creating two photons, it's also possible that a photon can create a pair of particles, that is a particle and an antiparticle. This process is known as pair production. In order for this to happen, the photon would need to have an energy equal to the energy of the particles being created. In this case, the photon would need to have an energy 1.022 mega electron volts in order to create the particle antiparticle pair. Here's a final question for you to try. Pause the video and read through this passage. Then answer the question at the bottom. Remember, you'll need to use the equation E is equal to HF. And finally, here are the answers.